Eric Rutan from Haiti Eternal, and uh, I'm going to start with my baby, my beauty. This is my USA Custom uh, BC Rich Ironbird uh, neck through. All mahogany. Bought it off my friend Joey Capizzi uh, in New York. He had it custom made in, I think, 2003 or so, 2002. Um, but yeah, this is my one of my babies. I have a lot of babies, but uh, this is this is the one that I play a lot for the last couple of years. My my backup is in that case there. I both have the same tuning. We tuned the C sharp standard. I I like to say so. It's C sharp all the way across the board. I'm a proud Diadario uh, in Dorsey. Um, I play 56 through 11. I've been playing Diadario for. 20 years of my career, um, but I just got endorsement. Thank you to Diadario for uh, giving me that, of course. And um, I've been playing, been in Dorsey for about seven years now. Um, also, BC Rich in Dorsey, uh, and the Seymour Duncan in Dorsey as well. You Seymour Duncan Custom uh, in the Bridge pickup, and this is a Bill Lawrence L500 made by the man himself uh, for the neck pickup. Um, and for Infamous, ah, I cannot speak today. Infamously used by uh, Dimebag, um, who we all know had an amazing tone, and that inspired me to get the Bill Lawrence in the in the neck. So, got a new Floyd Rose, authentic Floyd. I use Floyd religiously. Um, that's about it, though. It's all in its pure shape. My friend had had it made. Joey Capizzi had this custom made from the shop, uh, you know, 12, 13 years ago. So besides the pickups in the Floyd, it's all in its authentic shape. So next in line, I bought this one, which is my backup, which once again is a, another neck through uh, Ironbird with the reverse headstock USA, really dirty. <laughs> Collects a lot of dust because um, it's a nice guitar, but once again, L500, Bill Lawrence, Seymour Duncan Custom, Floyd, those are the parts I replaced. Everything else is in the same shape. Um, so you can see the problem is with these guitars, unfortunately, is they take a beating. Uh, I bought this, my original, well, I've, I've had, I don't know, six or seven Ironbirds at this point, but my original USA I have at home, um, and I wanted to replace it because I didn't want to bring on the road anymore. It's starting to take its toll. So uh, I went on eBay, I was looking for one, and uh, a gentleman from San Francisco had one for sale said death riffs on it and he was um, bidding for it so I just kind of sent him a uh, PM and just said hey I'm so and so and, and you know I'm, I'm desperate for an Ironbird I really need one for tour I'm retiring my old one just to be at home um, what will it take for me to buy it and you know he fortunately knew who I was and said listen I'll you know give me I don't remember what I paid for it but give me this I'll take it off the bidding right now so that's how I got it and uh, I was very grateful so he eternally gets into shows and merch and CDs for life for free. So that's because I was very grateful. Because I usually keep everything open. Honestly, I don't even use the volume knob much. I'm using the noise suppressor for, you know, for the noise and as a gating. So basically these are set up, but I don't use them. They're just always on. So it's a Morley Wawa. Once again, endorsed by Morley, which amazing company. Treat me fantastic. Um, I've been using Morley for... About 20 years, I used to have an original power wah, uh, the old gray one where you have to hit the button and it has a switch, and I loved that for years. Um, and when I was in Morbid Angel, we were touring with Pantera, Morley came out and said, hey, you know, we got these new bad horses Steve Vai created, um, would you like to try it out? I said, sure. No more switch, just on and off, made my life easy, and it sounds fantastic. So uh, I use them religiously. Um, also at my studio, Mono Recording Studios, I use uh, the Wah a lot for a lot of clients. These, it's funny, I've gone through a lot of different um, effects over the years, uh, but I used to have a lot of rack stuff, I used to have tons of stuff, and things would always break down. So I just kind of went back to the basics. Um, this is a delay reverb all in one pedal that Boss made in the 90s um, that they don't do anymore because I think they probably wisened up and said, hey, let's separate them and that makes them more money um, but fortunately for me I have three of them that I bought uh, early on and they sound fantastic um, that's for mostly just for my solos and things I like it a little bit wet um, the EQ is like a little bit of mid 
uh, mid-range boost just to have my soles cut through uh, and have a little bite. And uh, that's that's half the half my pedal setup. But unfortunately, the back line we we got to go doors are quick. But um, I use Maxon pedals religiously, and Maxon has been a company that's endorsed me for over a decade. Um, I've always used the Maxon OD808. It's a green pedal. I think a lot of people are familiar with. Um, but they just created the OD808 Extreme, which is a red distortion pedal that I love tremendously. So I've been using that religiously with a uh, Boston Noise Suppressor and um, Tuner and a wireless, Sennheiser Wireless. But, but Maxon pedals, man, I have probably 20 different pedals. And um, they, they, Kevin, who uh, works, you know, he takes care of all my stuff from Maxon. Uh, he, he does a great job and their pedals are fantastic. I've used them on countless records uh, at my studio and used them religiously on tour. Unfortunately, you can't see them, but if anybody knows Max and they know the OD808 and the OD808 Extreme are some of the best distortion pedals in it. So, um, I use this dual rack in conjunction with my baby. This is the Marshall JCM800. This is my. This is really my. my anybody knows me knows that I own. I don't know, 15, 20 amps at the studio, but the, uh, the JCM800 is really my baby. I grew up listening to JCM800 on so many thrash records. You name it. Who didn't use Marshall? You know, to me, uh, Marshall was the leader of just heavy metal um, tone and I think everybody's trying to modify from that and try to duplicate and replicate what Marshall excelled at in the beginning. Um, the JCM 800 I've used on many Hate Eternal records, um, used on some other records. Um, this model I've had about six or seven of them but this one um, was made in 97 actually from parts that were left over from the plant in Sheffield, England. Uh, of the original 800s, so they were only able to make 200 limited edition amps with the remaining parts. So this thing is hardwired. Um, my guitar luthier, amp repair guy who's at my studio, Granville Guitar Scooter, um, he's opened it up and has told me like it's hand wired to perfection. So they've only made 200 of them. I'm fortunate that I'm one of the 200 that actually own one, and um, that's my baby. I use the dual record conjunction. This is a little bit more gritty and gainy. The 800 has a lot of mid-range and a lot of clarity, and, and so the combination works real well. I use the three Marshall cabinets. Um, all have different speakers in it. The Marshall cabinet there has the uh, Celestion 75s. This one has greenbacks. Um, and then this one has 100 watt Celestions, a 1982 Marshall cab, uh, which were rare. They didn't make many of them. Um, so I like to have like a spread of different tones since I'm one guitar player with a three piece. So I like to kind of spread it out with as much width and dynamics as possible. So that's pretty much that. Well, first of all, thanks a lot for coming to check out my gear. Um, always glad to talk about all the stuff I'm using. If you're interested in what Hate Eternal's doing, you can see us at our Facebook page or you can go to HateEternal.com. Uh, if you're interested in what I'm doing at my studio, monorecording.com or our Facebook as well. Um, and pretty much keep up with everything I'm doing.